Hello folks, welcome to today's demonstration video of my eShop project. In this video, I am going to explain about the programming side of our single product view page. So without further ado, let's get into this. As you can see, I am currently on the home page of our eShop. To go to the single product view of a product, we have to click on the buy now button of that specific product. So now I am clicking on buy now button of this iPhone 13 Pro. Alright, now we are seeing the single product view of that. You can see our familiar eShop header section like this. Then you can see our familiar footer section on the bottom of this page like this. You can see our product images here like this. There are three of them as you can see. If you wanna see a much zoomed in view of them, you can click on them like this. This square here is showing the bigger view of them. We can see kind of a breadcrumb design here like this. By clicking on here, we can go to our home page back. This place is showing the title of currently viewing product like this. This is the title of our product as you can see. This section is showing the ratings of our product like this. We can see the score of stars and other related things there. This is the actual current price of the product. This place is showing the previous price, it's line through and showing in red like this. This place is showing the price and the percentage that the buyer is saving. This place is giving details about the warranty period of the product. This place is showing return policies regarding that product. This place is showing the available quantity of these product items. This place is showing the name of the seller. This is the first name of the seller. Then here's the last name. This place is showing how many items were sold by that seller. This place is showing about a currently going on promotion. It says stand a chance to get 5% discount by using Visa or Mastercard to do your payments. We can set the quantity of product items that we are buying on this field. We can just straight up type on this field or use these arrows to set the value. If we are trying to set a value lower than 1, these codes are giving an alert as you can't set a value that is lower than 1 as the quantity. If we are trying to set a value that is exceeding the available quantity, this is giving an alert as value that you are trying to set is exceeding the available quantity. This green color button here is a buy now button as you can see. Then this blue one is a add to cart button. Then this one is a add to watch list button. We can see it with the heart icon like this. The section here is showing some other products related to currently viewing product. Finally, this section by the bottom of body area is showing product details. This place is showing brand of the product. Then this place is showing model of the product. This text area here is showing further details of the product. Alright, let's get into the programming side of things. So now I'm going to VS Code. I'm currently viewing the single product view.php as you can see. From top of this PHP script, I'm requiring connection.php file to establish the connection with our database. Then these codes are checking out whether a product ID is coming using get method or not. If a product ID is not coming somehow, these codes are giving a response as something went wrong. If a product ID is coming, we are grabbing that like this. Then the search query is selecting product details from our database according to that product ID. If that product was on our database, we are keeping the details of it like this. If something went wrong in that process, this is giving a response as sorry for the inconvenience. This search query is searching product images from our database. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting those images to this image field. When clicking on those images, they are calling a JavaScript function named load main image like this. We are adding an ID to this image field as product image. We are doing this to carry this image field data to the JavaScript side using the Ajax method. If there weren't any images in our database, we are showing a stock image on these image fields like this. These are the codes of zoomed in image weaving section. We are adding an ID to these div tags as main image. 
we are doing this to grab incoming data coming from the JavaScript side. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting product title to breadcrumb design of our page. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting product title to title weaving section. These codes are setting actual current product price. These codes inside of this PHP script are generating a fake previous price, a fake saving amount and a percentage. Then these codes inside of this PHP scripts are setting them in correct places. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting the available product quantity. Then these codes inside of this PHP script are setting seller's first name. Then these codes are setting seller's last name. These are the codes of buying quantity setting input field. We are calling on key up JavaScript function named quantity value checker from this input field. It's taking available product quantity details to the JavaScript side. We are adding ID like this to grab this input field from JavaScript side. These are the codes of value increasing and decreasing arrows. Quantity value increasing button is calling a JavaScript function named quantity increase. Quantity value decreasing arrow button is calling a JavaScript function named quantity decrease. Then these are the codes of related items weaving section. Then these are the codes of product listing weaving cards of related products. Then these are the codes of product details weaving section. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting the product brand name. These codes inside of this PHP script are setting the product model name. Then these codes are setting product description inside of this text area. We are adding a read only attribute to this text area because we are not letting buyers to edit this. Ok, let's see our script.js file. You can see our JS function load main image here like this. It's getting the ID of the product here like this. We are grabbing product image field using its ID like this. Then we are grabbing zoomed in image weaving section using its ID like this. These codes are setting zoomed in view of an image to that main image square. Then you can see our quantity value checker JavaScript function here like this. It's grabbing available product quantity details from here. Then we are grabbing quantity input field using its ID like this. If value on that field is lower than or equal to 0, this is giving an alert as quantity must be 1 or more. Then these codes are changing value on that field again to 1. If value set on that input field is more than the available quantity, this is giving an alert as value that you are trying to set is exceeding the available quantity. Then these codes are changing value on that field to the available quantity. Then you can see our quantity increase JS function here like this. It's grabbing available product quantity details from here. Then we are grabbing quantity input field using its ID like this. If value on that input field is lower than the available quantity, these codes are adding 1 to that value. If we are trying to set a value that is exceeding the available quantity, this is giving an alert as value that you are trying to set is exceeding the available quantity. Then these codes are changing value on that field to the available quantity. Then you can see our quantity decrease JavaScript function here like this. Then we are grabbing quantity input field using its ID like this. If we are trying to set a value that is more than 1 to that field, these codes are subtracting 1 from the current value. If we are trying to set a value lower than 1, these codes are giving an alert as you can't set a value that is lower than 1 as the quantity. Then these codes are changing value on that input field again to 1. So folks, that's all I have to explain in this video. Stay tuned for the next one. See ya.